Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are working on a 2021 Tesla Model 3. The complaint on this vehicle is that there are alerts on the dash uh, concerning coolant level. The AC doesn't work. Really, this is going to be about the coolant level and how to check it out. Um, see if, also to see if the, if you need the toolbox 3 in order to do anything with the cooling system before releasing it and whatnot and maybe even how to get into getting service information and, and all that stuff so if that stuff interests you stick around so at the moment the ac is cooling but i wouldn't be surprised if uh, any cooling issues were a result of the cooling system being low so that may have that happens to a lot to gas powered vehicles where the cooling system will be shut down intentionally as a result of a cooling system issues we have to put this into service mode and to do that we're going to hit this right here the software hold model 3 let it go and then put in the password and the password is service we're gonna hit okay read our thing hit enable and we have five alerts to check let's go to service alerts this is how you are going to look for codes and we've got cooling level low um it shows you a description what sets it what clears it all that good stuff that is good to know uh hvac performance may be limited as a result of coolant level low so that's another uh, reason why we're not going to focus on the AC system just yet. Let's go ahead and confirm the fault that we are seeing here, the coolant level low. We're gonna open up the front and check the coolant level. And one of my coworkers said that they saw coolant around the left front uh, wheel area. So for that reason, we're gonna lift it. Let's go ahead and open up this front right here. And this is where we go we're going to check our coolant level. I'm going to remove this vent as well. So here's our coolant reservoir. Takes the blue BMW coolant. And we can see that it is actually low. Here's our level sensor. So we've got our pucks set up. There are holes for it. Be sure to use them. I found our leak. Looks like it was a bright idea to put a uh, coolant pipe right down there near the subframe. Pretty straightforward, fellas. I know this doesn't seem like a whole lot, but for those who are getting new into the Tesla world and the electric, uh, the electric vehicle, this is going to be a shocker because you know you you just you don't know we don't know, right? That's some pretty interesting stuff, if I'm not mistaken. That looks like a heat pump. Uh, they got AC lines connected to coolant lines. It's gonna get interesting, fellas. If you don't haven't heard about heat pumps, uh, it is coming hard. <laughs> it is gonna come our way. There's a lot of valves involved. Uh, it's an intricate system, and it, it may be the way forward from now on. So you may want to look into that as well. Not too bad, not too bad. Of course, if the front drive was here, the front drive motor was here, all of this would be much harder to access. Fortunately, they cut it into little sections. That goes right into the battery as well. So there are two ways you can look up the part numbers. One of them is that the part number is actually on the part itself. Hopefully you guys can see this. We've got the 107757-00-F. That is the part we're going to look up, but in other cases where, let's say that part was completely ripped off, we're going to have to go into the uh, factory service information and uh, locate it. Now let's go ahead and show you how to do that. I suppose this is where all the memes come from, <laughs> the Tesla oil filters <laughs> for our rear drive here. If you are interested in attending the same class that I took for Tesla with Seth Thorson, be sure to reach out to Megan at lmvindbavarian.net. I will leave a link in the description or on the screen. Uh, be sure to email her in order to get in touch with that training. 
Now keep in mind that that is an intro class that I took, but Seth Thorson is working on a next level uh, class. So if you want, and, and it's possibly gonna be hands-on eventually, but if you want Tesla training, be sure to reach out to Seth Thorson at the email that I just gave you. Uh, that is where I learned this stuff, so uh, I got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, he's a great instructor. Be sure to check him out. So for service information, we're going to go to service.tesla.com. You're going to want to create an account. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Once you create an account, go ahead and sign in. So we are working on the Model 3. Let's go to Model 3. And let's look up the part before we do anything else. For that, we're going to go to the parts manual EPC, electronic parts catalog, if I'm not mistaken. We are in the USA. Let's go to catalogs. Tesla vehicles, model three. Let's go to thermal management. Gotta love the uh, when they show all of these parts here. We're gonna go to cooling system. We've got hoses right here. Let's go to hoses. We can zoom in right here. And that looks like our part right there. Number two. Uh, it doesn't let you highlight it or click it, whatever. You just have to scroll down yourself. <laughs> doesn't matter. But that is it, that is our part number, 107.7577-00-FF, over the counter, that means non-refundable. So that we, that we found the part, let's go ahead and uh, find the service information for what's required when dealing with the cooling system. Service manual, let's go to service manual. And we got a bunch of stuff, <laughs> we're gonna go right to it, we're gonna go right to thermal management, we're gonna go to cooling system, and in these you can, click on each and every single one of these options <clears throat> so when you click on thermal management you'll get a picture of the cooling system like everything that's involved in that and when you go to cooling system and you click on that it won't show that same picture um, it will i like to go by the left side better um, instead of scrolling down on the right side so you can see that our cooling system is a different picture and it shows only the cooling system, not the complete thermal management system. So there are four different options for, you know, fluid. Uh, check and refill, drain and refill, partial refill, and bleed and vacuum refill. I prefer the vacuum refill. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on that. Let's see if it is just a vacuum refill or if there's something else required when dealing with these. Uh, you guys can pause anytime you like. And... Uh, read from there this is free to access nowadays for everyone so it doesn't hurt you to just create an account and check out the service information <coughs> it's telling you how to do the vacuum refill feel free to pause whenever you'd like so after the refill tool is over it tells us to reconnect 12 volt power so you were supposed to disconnect the 12 volt power to do that and it does tell us to hook up a laptop with toolbox 3.0 and there is a coolant air purge sequence that we must run and uh, there's this is the proce uh, procedure for the original model 3 what we just saw up here was for the heat pump module which we did see actually so I'm sure it's very similar Let's see. Yep, even if you don't have a thermal image, um, uh, thermal imager, <laughs> even if you don't have a heat pump, you will have to uh, run the thermal cool air purge, thermal coolant air purge routine. Let's see how much it costs to get the factory scan tool. You do need a special cable. The special cable wires up to the driver's side under panel. Not under panel, how can you see that? Like the knee bolster area. Just like an OBD connector would, it's a four pin connector if I'm not mistaken. Option two, diagnostic software. If you wanna rent out the diagnostic software, it is $500.
for 30 days or $3,000 annually. So not crazy bad. A minimum of like three days would be better, but they have a minimum of 30 days. So that is their way of doing it. Um, not too bad. If you're working on Teslas all the time, that is not too bad. I know the average consumer is going to be like, uh, what? No, $500? No, no thanks. Just to bleed the cooling system? Yes, just to bleed the cooling system. The last thing you want is to overheat a, an electric vehicle that uses that cooling system to keep the battery um, in, in operating temperature. So, yes, it's pretty important, I'd say. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, seek approval. And upon approval, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, diagnostic software bleed out the system, do it right, uh, have complete documentation of everything we do, and uh, get this car back on the road. All right, so we got the approval and the parts necessary to finish this job on this Tesla, but uh, it's been sitting for a long time, and the battery has gone down quite a bit. Let me go ahead and see if you guys can see this clearly. We're at one mile left. <laughs> so we're gonna have to charge up this vehicle. And for that, we're going to use the top down Pulse Q system. And it is uh, pretty self explanatory. It is a level two charger. It will allow us to fully charge this battery for this Tesla. And for that, we're going to use an adapter uh, because Tesla. <laughs> so you will need an adapter in order to get this done. So you don't need the app necessarily in order to charge a Tesla. With our adapter installed, we will go ahead and insert it does its handshake and then begins to charge once it turns green and to note um, we're going to completely charge the vehicle obviously but uh, to remove it you must press the button first and then it'll allow for removal just a super quick note on the app it's it's really just just to cover the basics you can set up your own vehicle you can set up multiple vehicles on this and you can set up and set up the charger to be plug and play so that you don't necessarily need the app in order to use it but it is nice you can actually limit current if you wanted to um, from 6 amps to 40 amps you can set up a schedule in order to well maybe you're on vacation you only wanted to do a slow charge for let's say like a couple hours a day you can set that up as well and you can set up multiple users as well that works for us in this shop because it, since it connects to your Wi-Fi, I can have this charger anywhere in the shop and I can access it with through the app anywhere in the shop as long as I'm connected to the internet on my phone. So I could be all the way at home, I live pretty far away, I could be all the way at home and have a car here charging, not that I necessarily would do that, but I can have it and still communicate with the charger and turn it off if I forgot or whatnot, and or get a notification when the vehicle is fully charged things of that nature. You can also see how it compares to uh, gas costs if you're interested in that. If you own one of these, you probably own an electric vehicle. We're using it at an, in a shop setting. Um, this is relevant information for those who own uh, electric vehicles. You might be interested in how much it costs uh, on your electric bill versus your uh, would-be gas bill. If you are interested in purchasing one of those, remember that code that I gave a long time ago, the Mario 10, still applies at topdown.us. So be sure to check out that website. Use the promo code Mario10 for 10% off of any purchase, any purchase in that website. Uh, it is still live and uh, in effect. All right, let's go ahead and remove this hose. I'm gonna back up some of these clips. A lot like BMW, if not exactly like BMW. Go ahead and back this up right here. Go ahead and back up this clip right here as well. If I'm not mistaken, this is the one that was in Rich, Re uh, Rich Rebuilds that broke and Tesla didn't want to fix it so they wanted to charge 16 grand for a new one could be wrong about that though
I'm just gonna completely remove this clip because I can't see the other side of it. There we go. And one more left, way over here. I could be wrong about that previous statement. I think this was the one that was on that guy's uh, channel. If you don't know who Rich Rebuilds is, he put a V8 ELS swapped the Tesla. <laughs> Which is pretty funny to me. This clip is a little harder to get, so I'm gonna need a different tool. And I'm removing that clip as well because it's hard to see the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this clip. Actually, the new hose comes with the clips. We close this right here. We got our new hose. Always give it a little tug to make sure that you are fully seated and not it's not gonna come out while the customer's out on the road. And we're done. To fill up the cooling system, if you made it this far, you're lucky because well you don't necessarily need the factory scan tool for that particular uh, function. There are other functions where, we, where yes you will need the factory scan tool, but in service mode there is a way to put this thing uh, in, in, a, in a function to receive the cooling uh, the coolant and to purge air from the cooling system so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that we've I've stopped charging this because we're moving the car around um, we're coming back and forth with the with the vehicle but I'm about to start filling it up I've got my funnel in place I've already decontaminated everything in sight <laughs> and to put this into uh, the cooling system purge mode we're going to go to thermal we're going to go to actions and we're going to go to start thermal fill drain coolant only and then we're gonna hit uh, start on that and it's gonna show us that the gateway is locked and it does show us how to uh, unlock it let's go ahead and do that now that I got my camera in a better position, let's go ahead and unlock this gateway. So we're going to turn the turn signal all the way up, hold the brake pedal for 10 seconds. And you're going to see gateway unlocking right there. And we are unlocked for about 900 seconds. So let's go ahead and take this off. We're going to hit start to start that procedure that we were already trying to start with. Keep in mind, you are not using anything other than half and half between BMW blue coolant and the um, distilled water. I already pre-mixed it and put it back into the bottle. That's all I've got right now to do. I don't. I am actually on back order with my uh, vacuum fill tool, so I have to do it the old school way, which is manually filling it up. So let's go ahead and fill it up. Of course, you want to keep this completely decontaminated so this all of the things that are involved in filling this system up have been decontaminated to the best of my abilities and this is pre-mixed coolant by the way and I will show the min max lines before finishing this video that is 
Uh, very important, you want to fill it up to the max line. It's pretty hard to see, but there's our min-max uh, lines right there. So we've got the purge function running now. You can't hear anything. This thing's running. We're going to wait 10 minutes and recheck the level, make sure it's at the max. Once that's done, we're going to go on a test drive, get it all warmed up. Uh, fully charge the vehicle after everything before um, releasing it to the customer and put the panel down underneath uh, once we conclude our leak test to be good and uh, call it a day I hope you all enjoyed this one as much as I did <laughs> alright so we are almost fully charged I still have some left to go but that's not to worry we have one a fault left and if you look over here go to thermo the actions this is how I went ahead and did it I just went through the whole thing made sure everything was good to go before going on a test drive um, one thing to note to do the coolant air purge procedure you must have a charger connected to the vehicle so make sure you have a charger on hand if you're gonna take on this job and uh, we're gonna go ahead on a test drive do a final leak inspection and uh, install the pan uh, the shop that it came from may have to install the pan though because well they have all the hardware <laughs> so we're gonna wrap it up with that thank you all for taking the time to watch I appreciate you all for joining me on this one um, if you like what you see be sure to leave a comment hit like subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you on the next one